Hi guys, welcome to the third Penny's Super Summer Mission. If you haven't checked out the previous two, they're available on YouTube and we really appreciate you joining us today, whether you're here at Penny's Youth Cafe or you're watching this on YouTube. Last week we were looking for the super man and today we're looking for the super woman. We've got two super women sharing later about their experience of Jesus and prayer. So thank you, Amy and Charlotte, uh, for sharing your perspectives. But let's start with John, Johnny and Ben telling us a little bit more about the Lord's Prayer. Over to you guys. Hey, Ben. You're right, Johnny. How was school today? Nah, it was okay. We had assembly in the morning. Again. How boring! What was it like this time? The vicar guy was back to give us our next gripping instalment of the Lord's Prayer. What was it today? More art and Halloween? Apparently, God speaks all Shakespeare now, so we have to call him Thy. What's that all about? I don't know. His kingdom is supposed to come, though. Kingdom? That seems a bit lightweight, don't you think? How do you mean? Well, if you're this awesome and lord of infinity, why would you settle for just being a king? Mm. Tell me what else seems odd. I thought God was immortal. Yeah. So, what's he need a will for? Hmm, good point. Pyro? The Lord's Prayer is called this because Jesus is sometimes called the Lord, and he taught us how to pray this prayer. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is made up of ten lines, and the first two go like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. And the second two lines of this prayer go like this. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For Christians, these are statements of intention. Uh, the kingdom is not like the United Kingdom or the kingdom of Sweden. It's a picture that we find in the Bible called the kingdom of God. Now, when Jesus came healing people, casting out demons, uh, uh, accepting the outcast, raising the dead, and criticizing the religious hypocrites, he said it was because the kingdom, this kingdom, has finally come to earth. Then he said, get this, his followers were to carry out the work of bringing the kingdom. So this prayer of Jesus is saying every single kindness, every time you forgive someone who has wronged you, every time you fight against injustice, that is the kingdom coming through you. At a world without pain or revenge or injustice is a good thing. It's God's will for us. But we are not puppets. He's not just going to do this. We can only take part in the kingdom if we want to. The fact that there's a God who respects our freedom to change the world to be the best humanity is the second reason to pray. Thank you, John, Johnny and Ben. We'll now hand over to another John. John Arthur is going to tell us how we're always looking for the super woman. See if you can spot Wonder Woman's growth from a naive understanding of humanity to accepting and deciding to oppose its capacity for evil as her mission casts her in the line of Jesus and in the role of a Christian. Over to you, John. Well, hi there, and welcome to Super Shorts, where every week, as the name suggests, we will take a short look at a superhero from our list. Today's hero is Wonder Woman. 
Uh, she's pretty near the top of our list in terms of the superpower hierarchy. She is, after all, a demigod. Uh, she's one half Eve, made from the clay of the earth, uh, and one half Zeus, the lord of lords of the pantheon. In her recent adaptation, uh, we find her living in her equivalent of the Garden of Eden, Themyscira, and she's surrounded by Amazonians uh, and part of a backstory where their destiny had been to bring peace to the human race. So let's see her in action as she begins to discover her powers. You're stronger than this, Diana. Again. Never let your guard down. You expect a battle to be fair. A battle will never be fair. <laughs> When Wonder Woman learns that the world is at war once more, World War I in fact, and that Ares, the god of war, who is very much a, a Satan figure in this story, um, is tempting and inspiring men and women to be about their mutual self-destruction, she leaves paradise, intentionally leaves, uh, to come and help man and womankind. Uh, in the film version, in this film version, she literally descends into a kind of a hell on Earth. Um, take a look, see what you think. She's taking all the fire, let's go! interesting about Wonder Woman and her story and her arc that she follows is that by the end of this she becomes convinced by her experiences that the nature of mankind and the evil that is there is partially their own free will at work but she decides to still stay with them to live among them uh, and to fight for justice in fact she becomes one of the founders of the Justice League and the purpose of that is to try and free the human race from their nature. Take a look. He used to want to save the world. To end war and bring peace to mankind. But then I glimpsed the darkness that lives within their light and learned that inside every one of them, there will always be both. A choice each must make for themselves, something no hero will ever defeat. And now I know that only love can truly save the world. So I stay, I fight and I give. for the world they know can be. So here is a simple challenge for you. Is this story like the Jesus story? A daughter of Almighty God leaves paradise, descends into hell to bring peace to the world. For the love of them, she decides to live among them and persuade them to turn to the way of justice. Nah. Probably just my imagination. I'll see you next time on Super Shorts. 
Thank you, John. Another great parallel between a superhero like Wonder Woman and the real life lived by Jesus. Last week we were reflecting on a part of the Bible which was written hundreds of years before Jesus was born. But today we're going to look at a letter that was actually written to early Christians uh, to a church in Philippi. The Apostle Paul may have been writing to early Christians, but the words that he wrote are still relevant to us today. In Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8, it says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So in a similar way to Wonder Woman choosing to uh, make a sacrifice in serving humanity, Jesus chose to step down from heaven, not only to serve humanity, but also to die a sacrificial death so that we could be in relationship with him and God. And in a similar way, we can now serve other people and demonstrate the sacrificial love of Jesus to everyone around us. Now we've got three questions for you. If you're in Penny's Youth Cafe, you'll be able to talk to people on your tables. If you're watching this at home, then why not grab some family members and have a, uh, a discussion about the, the next three questions that are gonna come up on the screen. Question one. Why do you think it took so many decades for a major superhero film to have a superwoman? Question two. Do you think the mythology of Greek gods surrounding Wonder Woman's backstory is more or less believable than the idea of a Christian god? Number three. Do you think that Wonder Woman's idea that only love can save the world is too romantic. Okay, if you're watching this at home, we'll give you some time now to have a think about uh, those questions by uh, playing you another worship song, which will be introduced by Dan Jennings. Over to you, Dan. We are all in a massive tent with thousands of people and suddenly a thunderstorm starts. You can hear the rain pounding on the tent. Some of it is leaking through in parts and thunder is striking all around. There are giant screens and they fizzle out oh, as a lightning bolt strikes. Then the sound of singing picks up from thousands of people. The words, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. At this point, we were singing in an actual storm. But the words don't just mean about singing in literal rain. We're also talking about uh, singing in metaphorical storms and mental storms in our lives where things are looking bad. Right now could be a bad time for you with the virus and uh, all of that where you might not be able to meet people as easily or maybe you've had it and it's been really hard for you. Worship is our battle cry. It's a form of prayer to God where we can cry out for help from him. Or it can be a mighty cry of celebration for all the great things that he has done for us. So join now in our battle cry by maybe raising your arms or singing or just singing in your heart uh, as we raise a hallelujah together.
Dan and thank you band. Uh, we're now going to hand over to one of the band members, Amy Shadbold is going to tell us a little bit more about her experience of Jesus and some of the highs and lows that we can all experience as Christians. Over to you, Amy. Hi guys, for those of you that don't know, my name's Amy. And something I just want to speak to you about today is my testimony in faith and how having a relationship with God impacts my day-to-day -day life. When I was little, I went to church. I always found it interesting. I had a great time. I found it really fun. Um, and I think this was mainly due to the social aspects. I never fully or really at all understood the importance of having a relationship with God. And this is probably because I was so young. Um, I then didn't go to church for quite a few years. I spent majority of secondary school and all of primary school without really giving it much thought at all. During this time, I probably would have said I was a Christian, um, but I never really understood what that actually meant. I knew I had a faith, but I didn't understand much about what that would mean for me or how it could at all have any impact in my life. Then, with a friend, I went to a Christian camp in 2017 and I found it interesting and I really did enjoy the social side of it yet again. Um, because I had such a great time, I then went the following year in 2018 and this was the first time I actually began to take a personal interest in Christianity and how God could work in my own life. I felt like I was finally beginning to understand what it was all about and so I started going to an old church. I'm not going to lie, things in my life went a bit down here from here for a while. Whilst I was loving the new church and all of my amazing new friends, there were many things in life that I just couldn't control and I really did struggle with that. Um, last summer in 2019, I then went to Soul Survivor and I was really overwhelmed with both learning more about God and how he'd had such a huge impact on the lives of those around me. Many of the conversations I had at Soul Survivor had a bigger impact on me than anything ever had before. And I realised that I really did believe in a God and it was the one that everyone always talked about. So, where does that put me now? It's definitely been a rocky journey since then. There have certainly been obstacles which have come in my way. Um, and these have definitely made me question what I believe in. But actually, I think these obstacles have also helped me. They've helped me affirm my faith and they've helped me to fully lean into God. Um, this is emphasised by the fact that his promises are to never let me down or fail me. I think this is really encouraging for me and hope it is for you that through the hard times and even at my lowest moments having a relationship with God means that I am never alone. I'm reassured that he sees me, he cares about me, he understands me and he loves me, even when I don't even have words to explain how I feel. This is something that I'm definitely learning to be better about, which is allowing God to see my weaknesses and just opening my heart to him. Um, I think this has definitely been helped by having such supportive, amazing Christian friends around me who constantly remind me of God's love. And I honestly do believe that God brought them into my life in perfect timing as they've really helped me develop my faith and encouraged me to seek God, even in the storm. So, although I don't know where this journey's going and I really don't know how hard it's going to be, I know I'm definitely on a journey with God and I'm so excited about where he's going to lead me. I hope you found this message at all useful. Um, I just want you all to know how much God really does love you he cares about you, he sees you, and he just wants your heart. Thank you, Amy. And we'll now hand over to Charlotte, who's going to tell us a little bit more about what prayer means to her. Over to you, Charlotte. So prayer for me is mostly about communication with God and strengthening that bond. It's not so much about asking him for anything, as it is about being thankful for all the blessings he's already given us. And I pray for all of you watching this video that you'll be able to really harness 
the, the intimacy of prayer and understand the true joy that God wants to bring into your life. Amen. Thank you, Charlotte. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we would love to see you in Penny's next Sunday at 6 p.m. So if you want to join us here at the Youth Cafe, please use the link on the following slide. Also, uh, in the week ahead, Penny's is open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So you can use the same link on the following slide to book your places here. Why not come with a group of friends, come and play on the, the games here, have a game of pool and enjoy the drinks at Penny's Youth Cafe. We look forward to being able to welcome you back here and join the week ahead. Why don't you continue to reflect on that verse that we shared today? In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who is there in your life who would benefit from experiencing the sacrificial love of Jesus in the week ahead? Thanks again for joining us. God bless you. Bye.